Welcome back to the channel, I'm Plangelier, and today I'm going to be talking about the World of Tanks Halloween event. Uh, the event began on October 25th and will last way past Halloween until the 8th of November. But before we start looking at their page here, let's uh, go ahead and look at what you can see in-game. Okay, so as far as tanks in-game, we have the Hornet. We have the Cerberus, we have the Goliath, the Malachite, and finally the Grenadier. Okay, now that we see the tanks, let's go ahead and take a look at the consumables. So you have the Born Ready, which provides instant gun reload. You have the Emergency Kit, which will repair your modules. You have emergency repairs which will heal uh, crew members, extinguish fires, heal you, your tank itself and repair damaged modules. You have the energy shield which makes your tank invulnerable for 7 seconds. You have field repairs which instantly heals uh, a part of your hit points and allies within an area. And lastly you have the turbocharger which speeds up your tank. Okay, now let's look at the store. So in the store we have unique styles for, and commanders for coins. So we have the Amex 1390 skin, the Centurion 71 skin, the M103, T54, and T49. And also with each of these that you purchase you get uh, the crew member associated. Um, I'm pretty sure you can use these crew members in any tank however, so that's pretty cool. And then also we have items for coins. We have directives. Um, personal reserves and also crew books. Okay, let's move on and talk about the difficulty. So in difficulty one you have minimum risk three phases and you get minimal reward. For difficulty two it's increased risk you have four phases now and your reward is increased. And then lastly we have <laughs> stage three or uh, difficulty three which is four challenging phases with the maximum reward and now let's take a look at the testimony which is kind of a cool feature that they've added um, so they built a whole story around what happened with Mirani 13 and you can click on the images and you can read more if you like so it tells the whole story you earn these by just playing okay and that's it for in game. Let's take a look at the website. Okay, now that we've looked in game, let's look at the nine types of anomalies that you can find in this mode. Now, you collect anomalies by wiping out enemy vehicles, and sometimes they'll drop them. So, the first anomaly is the ceramic core, which gives you plus 20% to your damage. Next is the hammer thrower, which gives you a plus 5% chance to cause plus 20% damage. You have hot needle, which is plus 5% to set an enemy on fire. You have inspire, which uh, boosts your crew performance by 15%. You have machine gun, which boosts your reload by 15%. You have mobility, which boosts your engine power and turret traverse by 10%. You have regeneration, which gives you 10 hit points every 2.5 seconds. Sniper which gives you negative 15% to dispersion while moving or turning, and Vampire Bite, which steals hit points upon penetration of enemies, recovering 20% of damage taken. Keep in mind, Vampire Bite doesn't work every single time. There's just a chance that it will work. Okay, so now we're looking at the mini-map. Uh, we're going to go over the different things here, and the cool thing is, is that it's interactive on their website. So first we're going to look at the zone, where you can find the different types of standard enemies. Uh, the little purple dots are going to be Miriam that you haven't picked up. The giant purple stature <laughs> is going to be Magnus, which is where you have to take all of your collected Miriam to go on to the next phase. The giant red thing is the Immortal, which is completely invincible. If you go within his uh, ball, his radius, then you'll be damaged by a, a corrosion type thing. And then also he can shoot you with his gun. He fires HE, 
So if you're playing something like the AMX 1390 or the T49, uh, or if you just have your back turned to him in any other tank, he will absolutely annihilate you. So you, all you can do is run from the Immortal. So next let's talk about the different types of enemies that you will encounter while playing this game mode. The first type here on the website is the Hedgehog, and essentially it's just uh, the mine that you can use from Steel Hunter. If it hits you, it does huge amounts of damage, but you can shoot them and they're all one shots. Uh, and you can also dodge them if you're quick enough. So not a huge threat, you just gotta be aware of them. The second type of enemy is the Rabbit. The rabbits will just run from you and try to shoot you while they're running. They have 340 hit points and you, you, pretty, you just gotta chase them down and uh, take them out. They're really easy to kill. So the third type of enemy is called the guard and it can be a variety of tanks. It can be a Churchill, it can be a Sherman, it can be an Udez, it can be a Centurion 1. And, there, and there's a couple other ones, depending upon what stage you're on and um, what difficulty you're on. On to the fourth unit, it's called the Hunter. Now these will purposefully hunt your group. They spawn in, they don't just sit anywhere, they spawn in and they come after you. Um, typically there's a, they do high damage and they have a good amount of hit points, uh, very, very dangerous enemies. The fifth enemy we have is the Immortal himself. You cannot fight the Immortal once again, and you just have to run from it. And the last type of enemy is called the Mosquito, which is just a KV-2 that has been put hull down, and <laughs> all it has is its turret moving around. Don't get hit by it. Uh, both with the Immortal and with the Mosquito, you'll see a laser pointer uh, and they'll show you where they're aiming. So you can avoid those. Okay, now let's look at the different skins that they came up for for this event. So they had Ito, um, I'm gonna find messes up, Ito Masahiro, uh, the art director for the Three Silent Hill games, and Akira Yama uh, Yamaoka a world famous video game uh, music composer and sound designer. Uh, well they had them design a soundtrack and uh, and design some skins for a couple tanks here. So we have the Panther 2, uh, we have the E50, the E50M, and the Leopard 1. Leopard 1 in my opinion is my, the fa my favorite because of this light on the front. The problem is with these is that they're, they cost a ridiculous amount of gold. Um, so I think the Leopard 1 costs 4,500 gold, the E50M costs 4,000 gold, the E50 costs uh, 30, or it might cost 4,000 as well, and then the Panther 2 costs 3,500. Pretty outrageous if you ask me. I mean, it's pr you know really cool that they did this, but um, personally I don't think it's worth the gold at all. Now let's talk about something that really kind of irritates me about the game mode, and that is that you have to spend outrageous amounts of credits in order to recover your commanders. Now, when I first played this, I thought that meant if your commander died, if your vehicle died in the battle, then you would have to recover them. Turns out, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, you have to recover your commander no matter what. And that can get very costly unless you're able to do missions and get free recoveries. So as you can see, your first recovery is going to cost 25,000 credits. Your second recovery is 75,000 credits. Third recovery is 135,000 credits. And four and anything above that is 225,000 credits. To me, that's outrageous and it kind of pushes me away from the game mode. I don't know why they did that. Um, I can't think of any other game mode that they've ever done where you had to pay so many credits just to continue playing the special game mode. It's kind of outrageous, really. And also, if you don't do the recovery, then you have extremely long wait times, like uh, 20 hours plus, um, in order to wait for your commander to recover. So it's a bit ridiculous. Don't know why they did it. But alongside that, you can also get commander experience boosters. You can purchase those with gold, or you can do get them by doing missions. 
if you purchase it using gold, it's 50 gold per purchase. Uh, and there's no point in doing that. Don't waste your gold. And honestly, don't really waste your silver unless you just have a bunch of silver to waste. Uh, the, the things that you can get from this game, which, you've, which we've already went over, aren't crazy good. And you can earn them in the time uh, that we're allotted to play this game type. So don't, don't go wasting your credits, don't go wasting your gold. You'll be fine. Okay guys, all in all I really enjoyed the Mirni 13 game mode. It's a nice break from the standard play and it's actually very challenging, especially at difficulty 3. So go check it out if you haven't already. I hope this video has helped some people. If I missed anything, be sure to uh, let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I have several videos I'm working on, both tanks related and other video game wise. Uh, lastly, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash plangelier, where I stream tanks and a variety of other games. Take care everyone, and I'll see you next time.